Well, it's a nice day today. The sun is shining. Nice high temperatures, so let's do some electronics. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We've got loads of inputs on the back of this amp. So, I'm going to put an input into one of those and see if it's getting through this board. Now, the way I think this works is that this chip selects what audio input you're using and then it's sent to this chip here, which is an op amp, which mixes all of this chip's outputs together because this chip has multiple outputs as well as multiple inputs and uh, whichever outputs are active is going to depend on what input you have selected so this chip is going to mix those two all together I mean only one pair of outputs is going to be active at any given time so that's going to mix all those together and I think that from there it sends that into this chip which is another op amp which I think is just used as a buffer I'm not saying that's definitely how this thing works but that's what I'm assuming and then up here on this connector here, although you cannot really see it, we've got a couple of connectors, I mean connections here, marked LO and RO. I think that might very well mean right output and left output, or left output and right output rather. And this, this, this thing here where it looks like it says L1 and R1, I think that's LI and RI, which would stand for left input and right input so we'll see if it's getting through that board and then we'll see if it's getting into this chip and if it's getting into this chip but not getting into the speakers then we'll know that this is what's gone wrong and if this is what's gone wrong I will have to order a spare or replacement part rather alright so let's see if audio is getting through this chip now the way I think this works is that this chip selects the audio, and then, well, I've already explained that, haven't I? So I've got this on, and I've got some music playing into it, which you can also hear, because that's also connected up to my other amplifier as well. So I'm now going to probe around on the chip and see if we're getting audio on any of these pins. So I'm going to try right in the middle, see if we get anything. Oh, look at that. It's the first pin I tried. Right, now I don't know if that's the input or an output that I'm probing at the moment, so I'm going to select one of the different inputs on the front here and see if that disappears. Oh yes, it does. Alright, let's put that back onto AUX and it should come back. Well, that shows the chip's working. Keep bashing the camera with my huge bulk. Let's see if it's getting into this chip and into this one as well. Now, I don't know which pins are actually going to have a signal on them, so I'm just going to probe each one and see if we get anything. Okay, well, we're getting audio into that chip. Is there any audio getting into this chip? I don't really wish to probe anything that's going to have a voltage rail on it. Yep, that looks like it's working. So, we know audio is getting through. So the next thing to do is see if the audio is getting into this board. I'm trying to film this while there's still enough natural light because I only like natural light, I don't like artificial light. Okay, well I've done some sniffing around and... Well, as you saw earlier, this board appears to be working just fine. However, there is no signal getting in to this board. So I think if we can figure out why there is no signal getting in here, when we are getting a signal out of here, I think that might just fix whatever is wrong with this amplifier. So 
you know, it could be a crack in the circuit board, it could be, you know, it could be something as simple as that, but to get the circuit board out, that's going to take quite a lot of work. I have to take quite a few things apart to get to the circuit board. It would have been very nice if they'd have had a panel that you can unscrew, like a lot of amplifiers did. But they didn't do that in this one, so I'm gonna have to take the whole thing apart just to see if that if there's a crack and see if, just to see why the audio is not getting through. Well while I'm busy disassembling this thing, I'm just making this little clip here to remind myself that when I put these two ribbon cables back in, that the white end of the ribbon cable correlates with this little black marker on the board there. As you can see there's not one on the other side. So I know which way around to put these in so I won't blow anything up. Okay, well that was a lot of work. So what we've got to do is find out why the audio is not getting from here to here. Now I don't think any of these transistors are anything to do with the audio path. I think these ones up here might be to do with that, but I don't think any, um, any of these, this one or this one, are anything to do with the audio. They might be, but I don't think they are. So I want to find out where the audio goes after it goes into this connector, find the path it takes through the board, and find the path it takes to get here. I want to see if there's any broken circuit traces. I want to see if it's going through any of these parts here. Oh. And a nice thing, no surface mount components to worry about. Well, this is certainly an enigma. So, I've gone around with my multimeter, and this connector here, which connects to the volume and tone and all that on the front board, instead of going to this connector here, it's actually going to this one here. And this one appears to join up with these connectors here, which is um, this little board here, for the external inputs and outputs. So. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Okay, well I might be one step closer to solving this mystery. So, probing around further with my multimeter, it appears that this board here, which has got an input selector on it, this doesn't appear to send any audio into our front panel. Instead, what it appears to be doing is sending its audio to one of the jacks at the back, and that's where it's going. And I can sort of prove that right now as I'm putting this back together. So I'm going to put one of my meter probes, which is just a wire, on this one here that says EXOL, which stands for External Output Left. And if I just probe one of the pins on here, we should get a beep at some point. It might be in this connector. There we go. So this was the jack where we were getting audio coming out to. And that's going up here. That's not going down there. I have no idea why they've done that, but... I've got a hunch that if I connect a signal to our EXT in, which this board takes care of, this might just work. It's something very strange and something I wouldn't have thought of doing, but... Well, um, I'm just gonna try that and see what happens. Bet you didn't think I could get this back together, did you? Well, I've put it back together. Now, I've got my scope connected to the EXD out, and I've got my computer's audio output connected to the EXD in, which, as you might remember, is also connected up to another amplifier, so we can actually hear the sound. So I'm going to turn this on. Might saw a little blip on the scope there. And we'll start some music playing, some Commodore 64 music. And you can see that this is passing a signal to that. And if I press one of the different selection buttons here, let's put tape, as you can see it's disappeared because the, there's nothing connected up to the tape input. 
Same goes for the tuner and phono. But when I press aux, which has got something connected to it, So the next thing to do is stop this playing because it's looped over. The very next thing to do is I want to put something, connect something to the EXT in and see if this actually does anything. Ever one of those days when you feel just absolutely completely stupid? Yes, you are hearing this amplifier hooked up to my little test speakers. So I've got that connected to the, um, what was it called now? Not external. Auxiliary input. And that's working absolutely fine. Okay, let's try to find something with a little bit more fidelity than Commodore 64 music. Okay, there we go, that's better. So, as I've got the computer connected to the um, external input, these aren't going to do anything when I press them. Though it does go sound for just like a blink of an eye when I press those buttons. Let's see if muting works. It certainly does. Volume. Treble. which isn't really going to be evident on these small speakers and super bass, which really isn't going to be evident on these speakers I can hear it a little bit So yeah, after all that, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this at all It was just my infinite stupidity that made me think this amplifier wasn't working so what I think the deal is with these um, external inputs and outputs is maybe this is where you would have connected a graphic equalizer or some other kind of similar device. I think this is going to become my main amplifier for my computer. Well, that's it for now, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider giving me a big thumbs up Smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment if you have one. And as always, until next time, goodbye. Okay, so we got lots of inputs and outputs at the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm talking like the Action Lab. Yeah, you're not getting in now. That's it. Give up.